Telemedicine is still at an early stage in many low income countries. Uh, the current evidence during the pandemic uh, uh, shows that uh, telemedicine is widely employed by healthcare systems in high income countries, particularly in Europe, uh, North America, and in some areas of China. And we can see, we can say that 85% of the telemedicine solutions are used in these countries. And uh, uh, still much has to be done to implement telemedicine in low income countries. And I think uh, that there is a huge demand for such solutions in, in these countries because of the distance, because of uh, the lack of hospitals, because of the lack of doctors, but still we need to do a lot because these countries uh, uh, lack of infrastructures, a lack of money that is needed to implement these solutions. But we can see uh, that during the pandemic, uh, at least in high income country, countries, there was an increase in the use of telemedicine, which ranged between 40 to 80% compared to pre-pandemic period. So we hope that uh, the COVID-19 pandemic we, we will help to uh, uh, promote implementation of these solutions and to put money in these countries to uh, implement these, these solutions. Yes, the Internet of Medical Things uh, uh, became very popular during the pandemic uh, because it is a very uh, cheap and uh, widespread uh, mode of uh, monitoring patients remo remotely because it is based on the use of smartphone apps and everybody has a smartphone and is based on uh, usually on cheap uh, devices that can be used at home to track several um, vital and non-vital signs. And we have seen uh, that these kind of uh, solutions can be very um, uh, useful to uh, engage uh, the patients in the management of their condition. And they can help to uh, ensure prompt feedback of uh, 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 their status to, to their doctors, and they can improve uh, medication intake, and ultimately they can help doctors to more closely, more promptly, and more effectively manage uh, their patient. So we think since these solutions are um, uh, cheap, uh, they can be sustainable in, in the future. And this will be uh, the, the main uh, way uh, telemedicine will be uh, spread among the population because everyone has the internet and everyone has a smartphone, even in um, many low income countries. You may be aware there are already, a, a, there is already a good deal of journals focused on digital health. But most of, the, of these journals are very technical and uh, they are not very practical or pragmatic. So I think uh, the motivation to settle uh, Connected Health with the support of your publishing company was to provide evidence on the usefulness of digital health and particularly of telemedicine, this is the, the reason why we call it Connected Health, from a practical perspective. Because our idea was to present evidence and solutions that can be easily implemented in the daily practice of patients with different conditions. Uh, so Connected Health is, is meant to be a virtual place where experts can share and discuss their uh, research results in a pragmatic way. Uh, 
So this is not simply a journal. It's uh, more linked to um, a, a web experience, a social experience, a web social experience. So our idea is not only to publish papers, but also, but also to create a network and to favor communication uh, between experts. Uh, I like to use uh, a Greek word, word uh, and uh, I like to uh, label uh, this journal as a sort of multidisciplinary agora, as they, the agora was the place where uh, the major uh, uh, wise people were gathering in old Greek towns, uh, discussing, exchanging uh, their opinions and their uh, the results of their research. And in this century is much easier to do that because of the web. And so we are all connected and this might be very, 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 very easy. Of course, uh, we are focused on the uh, publication of high quality research. And this is the reason why we initially selected very high, um, uh, high standard uh, um, researchers to be editorial members of, of the journal. Um, so during uh, the COVID uh, pandemic, uh, I was uh, very much committed to serving patients through uh, our telemedicine platform because we are using a, a, a telemedicine platform in Italy to uh, manage mainly patients with chronic disease. And uh, we have seen that there was an increased demand for telemedicine. And this was due to the widespread isolation of patients that were not able to access uh, hospitals or outpatient clinics. And uh, I realized that the uh, authors of the paper had uh, the same experience in their country. Uh, and so we decided that the time was right at a few months distance from, from the beginning of the pandemic to try to um, um, describe what was happening and what happened uh, during the, the pandemic to provide a picture of the situation of telemedicine in that country. And so the paper um, indeed provides uh, what is the telemedicine status during the pandemic in major countries worldwide. And we try to summarize the progress is made, but also the several gaps that still need to be filled in. And there are so many yet to be, to be filled in. Uh, since the authors were all experts in, in, in the field, uh, we, thought that it was essential to give some perspective and provide some recommendations and also suggest some improvements to be made to uh, be implemented in the future in order to make telemedicine more uh, effective, particularly for patients uh, with chronic condition. So we think uh, that the paper is a sort of guide for people working in the field, and particularly uh, policymakers, because we have seen that most of the limitations, most of the barriers that prevented the implementation of telemedicine during the pandemic was, was due to the lack of proper regulations, infrastructures, and so on. Uh, so during the pandemic, I published an opinion paper uh, trying to describe uh, what was happening uh, during the pandemic. And uh, some of these data were also reported in, in the paper that we published in Connected Health. Unfortunately, in Italy, as in other countries, the, the doctors and the healthcare system was unprepared to use telemedicine for, for managing these, these patients. And uh, because, because doctors and patients were not familiar with these solutions. 
And also we had the problem with uh, infrastructures, lack uh, of uh, proper solutions, and we still had a lot of patients asking for, for, for this solution to, to be monitored uh, uh, at home. Uh, so uh, what has been changed in Italy is that after the pandemic, uh, the national health system has finally realized the importance of telemedicine. So now we have uh, some uh, regulations, some projects uh, in, in order to implement telemedicine and integrate telemedicine in the healthcare system. So uh, I'm positive about the future. 